Peninsula comes to us from director Yeon Sang-ho and is the follow-up to the cult favourite South Korean zombie film Train to Busan, which used the backdrop of a breakout zombie apocalypse to tell the story of a heartfelt journey between a father and daughter that was packed with a surprising amount of social commentary. As Train to Busan has gained a considerable cult following in the years since its release, anticipation for its follow-up Peninsula has been sky high. In the United States, the film has even been retitled as Train to Busan Presents Peninsula, so it's best to capitalise on Train to Busan's success. Although this bears the question of how come the film isn't simply called Train to Busan 2. Because instead of delivering a traditional sequel to Train to Busan with returning characters, Yon Sang Ho has opted to make a standalone film set within the zombie apocalypse world of Train to Busan that's set four years later and focuses on an entirely new set of characters. As a result, Peninsula opens itself up to experimentation, allowing for the creative team to expand upon elements introduced in Train to Busan and deliver a wholly unique standalone experience, which, if if this film is successful, could potentially lead to a Train to Busan universe of films with loosely connected but standalone stories. So with this in mind, I cannot stress enough in saying that Peninsula could not be more different from Train to Busan. Peninsula is a standalone experience through and through, and as a result, it's best not to go into this film expecting Train to Busan 2, because it isn't. And once you see the film, you'll quickly understand why it's just called Peninsula in most countries. Peninsula follows former Marine Captain Jung Sok, and a team of mercenaries based in Hong Kong, who are tasked with returning to the South Korean peninsula of Incheon City in order to recover an abandoned food truck which has millions of US dollars stashed inside. The mercenaries must then take it back to their employers with the money intact, all the while avoiding the thousands of zombies still left in the city, on top of a rogue militia, which has turned the peninsula into a lawless territory. If you've heard that description and seen Train to Busan, you probably noticed very quickly how different peninsula sounded in comparison. This is obviously a far cry from a father and daughter being stuck on a train as a zombie apocalypse breaks out. And as a result of this tonal and thematic shift from Train to Busan, the two films have gained predictable comparisons to Alien and Aliens. As Jung Sang Ho opts for an action focused approach with Peninsula. The benefit of having such a vastly different approach invites the idea that other sequels can experiment with different styles and genres and prevent certain formulas from becoming stale and cliche. However, this also comes at the risk of alienating fans who fell in love with the style of the original film. Peninsula is focused on being a roller coaster ride with vicious zombies and moments of goofy comedy peppered throughout, not too unlike, say, Zombieland. Peninsula is a film packed with fast-paced action scenes and car chases, designed to get the blood pumping, as the mercenaries are forced to not only combat the hordes of zombies, but also the rogue militia that has claimed the city for itself. If you wanted to, you could essentially boil the plot of Peninsula down to being Escape from New York with zombies, mixed with elements of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome and the heist plot lines of later Fast and Furious movies. Our main character Jung Sok even bears a number of visual and character-based similarities to Snake Plissken and even Han from the Fast and Furious movies. As a result, Peninsula falls to being more of a fast popcorn thrill ride meant to entertain the audience in under two hours. And when viewed through that lens, Peninsula is an incredibly entertaining time at the movies that you can just check your brain out out with. Although viewers coming off Train to Busan and expecting more of the same will likely be caught off guard, as any emotional investment is traded for quick action thrills, which is why it is best to view Peninsula as being its own thing. And as its own thing, Peninsula does a lot right. The film is packed with high stakes action, which is best exemplified whenever the film focuses on capturing the action in camera on any one of the massive sets. The in camera set pieces are well staged and shot with some fantastic set design, particularly the memorable arena sequence, which utilizes dozens of stunt performers. It's an incredible sequence to watch on the big screen. Peninsula also needs to be credited for the incredible special effects makeup work, which does a phenomenal job in realizing the zombies with practical work, making the undead look absolutely terrifying. Most of the main characters are generally pretty entertaining to be around as well, even with some actors really hamming up their performances for some truly cheesy or overly melodramatic moments, particularly with the movie's villains. On the downside, the main characters can at times feel like they've stepped out of a shampoo commercial. They're just a bit too immaculate for a zombie action movie. The standout characters are easily these two young sisters who accompany Jong Sok for much of the film, leading to fun highlights, including some creative uses of lights and noisy remote control cars to destroy distract the many zombie hordes in the movie. It is worth noting that the gore in Peninsula has been toned down considerably from Train to Busan. Aside from some splashes of blood and some violence covered up through quick cuts, this is one of the least violent or graphic zombie films I've seen since World War Z, likely as a result of shifting focus to an action-oriented approach, which I found a little disappointing. The low-quality sound design and effects for the zombies definitely leave a lot to be desired as well. 
Additionally, with Peninsula taking a lighter approach compared to Train to Busan, this has unfortunately led to an abundance of campy and unnecessary additions to the film, including the use of some Z-grade American actors for a brief scene at the beginning of the film, who are there purely to deliver some ridiculous exposition in English, as a means to get viewers up to speed on the state of the world since the first film. Other filmmakers may have chosen to use more creative methods to deliver this information. Instead, we have two actors reading lazily written dialogue in the most on-the-nose way imaginable. It it reminded me of when old Japanese Godzilla movies would occasionally incorporate English speaking actors for certain scenes, which were clearly tacked on additions. Disappointingly, Peninsula also uses an abundance of CGI for a number of big action set pieces, and it just looks atrocious, where it is clear that they just didn't have the budget to pull this stuff off. For example, there are quite a few car chases in the film, which all seem to use CGI, that felt like it was ripped straight out of an old PlayStation 2 game, or the 90s initial D anime. The only practical elements of these car chases were often just the actors sitting in a car, and that was about it. I appreciate the ambition, but honestly, I just wish everything had been kept in camera, as all of the practical action and fight scenes that are choreographed on a practical set are genuinely exciting and entertaining to watch. Despite all this, Peninsula is still an entertaining time at the movies, with a pretty fantastic climax. Those wanting some of the nuance and emotional weight from Train to Busan are likely to be disappointed, but if you go into Peninsula accepting of it being its own standalone experience, then I think you'll have quite a bit of fun with the movie. Just be sure to leave any logic behind when you do see it with a big surface of popcorn. Peninsula gets a 7 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your monofix. Bye guys.